Do you know his name? That's the focus of tonight's angle. That question was posed by activists and protesters for weeks after the killing of George Floyd. It was meant to jar the nation into focusing on police brutality, and it worked. Floyd's name and visage became synonymous with the suffering that comes from racial injustice. Of course, there were others who simply used his name for their own twisted political agendas, as if burning down our cities would bring Mr. Floyd back or solve underlying problems. Of course, it just merely made matters worse. And in the intervening weeks since the upheaval in late May, many more African-American families have lost loved ones to violence. At least 144 have been murdered since June 1st in Chicago alone, including these children, three-year-old Mecky James, one-year-old Sincere Gaston, seven-year-old Natalia Wallace, all shot dead. But unlike with George Floyd, the general public won't remember them because the activists don't find their stories useful. And the media, also pushing a political agenda, they basically just yawn. Last week in Milwaukee, a well-known, passionate figure in the community, someone who had supported every issue from police reform and other liberal causes, uh, but lately he had been holding homemade pro-Trump signs. That man was murdered. He also happened to be African-American. He was shot and killed outside his office just after noon while he was sitting in a lawn chair. This happened in broad daylight. Do you know his name? I bet you don't. It's Bernal Trammell. Saw the cops pull up, uh, the vans, ambulance, firefighters, and uh, we sat and watched. They gave CPR for about 15 to 20 minutes. Security cameras captured these images of the suspect, and police are continuing to investigate. But the Milwaukee Sentinel Journal reported just a few days ago that Reggie Moore, director of Milwaukee's Office of Violence Prevention, said he recently intervened in a dispute between Trammell and a young man. Moore thought the incident was related to a Trump sign that Trammell was carrying. And Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican, tweeted this on the news of Mr. Trammell's tragic death. Bernal Trammell was known to many in Milwaukee. My condolences to his family and friends. I hope they get answers and justice soon. Well, you probably won't be surprised to know that the major networks outside of Fox didn't even mention this horrific murder. Not a peep from CNN, MSNBC, The Washington Post, The New York Times, ABC News, CBS News, or NBC. And this led YouTubers to pick up the slack and ask some pretty basic questions. I can't for the life of me fathom how it's justified that just because somebody is a Trump supporter, that they get shot down in cold blood when they've never ever done anything to anybody other than express their opinions. I even wonder if the mainstream media is going to give it the amount of coverage that it's given some criminals out there that have died in the streets. Because they certainly don't give it to children. They don't get the coverage. No, they don't. And no one knows their names, as I said. But those victims are people too, like Mr. Trammell was. That guy was just full of love. It was very deep conversations. He's just a, a community figure. Tonight, the Ingram Angle has exclusive video of Trammell's interactions just days before his murder that may shed light on what was motivating the homicide. Obama has did nothing for us. Everybody say health care. We can't afford health care. We ain't got no money. So Trump at least had rather the will of God or his own inspiration to do something that no president has ever done, and that's why he got my vote. If I stood here with a sign saying Trump, Trump soldiers, I get my I get a rock thrown at me at best. One thing about at best. Trump soldiers, you're right, right. No fear, come what may. She just calls you disgusting. Well, it ain't right, but at the same time, we're in America, freedom of expression. You know, he seemed to truly believe that, didn't he? Well, we'll air more of that video later in the show. 
But at the very least, it reveals that Mr. Trammell was aware that he could be harmed for his pro-Trump views. Now, if this is true, it's absolutely appalling, as is the deafening silence from Democrats. Where's Al Sharpton? Where's Black Lives Matter, a group that Mr. Trammell even supported, by the way? But they're nowhere to be found. Apparently, certain black lives do not matter. Let's not forget the left's long history of ignoring, vilifying, or dehumanizing blacks who disagree. They're called Uncle Toms or race traitors. They're not authentic. Just like Biden said, you're not really black if you're not a Democrat. At least twice in the last few days, MSNBC hosts have proved my point. Has Donald Trump ever promised you anything financially in exchange for your blind support um, of this administration or helping his campaign? No, and I've known him since 2015. Are you a paid campaign surrogate? Are you being compensated? Never, by it's I a don't simple get a question. dime for this president. You only ask me that because I don't fit your narrative. I'd like to turn the question on the anchor and say, are you a campaign surrogate paid by the Biden campaign? But how insulting is this? How demeaning. You didn't think this way on your own. You couldn't have come to this conclusion on your own using your own intellect. Think about that. The Democrats and their radical media collaborators have been pulling a con on African Americans for decades. The party of slavery and Jim Crow, the party of segregation and the KKK has worked overtime to cover up its own sins in order to once again divide us along racial and ethnic lines. Now, doing so requires that they demonize, disenfranchise, deplatform, and dehumanize Americans who disagree. But they know, I think, that we're on to them in their sick game, that more minorities are seeing through their sloganeering about Black Lives Matter when, in fact, they act like only certain Black Lives Matter. More decent people, I believe, are seeing the pathetic failure in leadership in Democrat-run cities where black and immigrant-owned businesses are destroyed with impunity. Elected officials so possessed by anti-Trump hatred that they actually do more to protect the rights of violent protesters than they do the rights of their own law-abiding residents. Now, on occasion, a few honest Democrats will speak out, as happened in a call with Mayor Lori Lightfoot early last month. We have to come up with a better plan because once my fear is once we're, they're done looting and rioting and whatever's going to happen tonight, what are we going to do and what do we tell our residents other than good faith people stand up? It's not going to be enough. Thank you, Alderman. Next question. Well, no, I want an answer. I, I you commented on everybody. I want an answer. Thank you. Did you get that? To a Democrat, city alderman, you're 100% full of you know what. It doesn't have to be this way. African Americans, Latinos, other immigrants who just want what everyone else wants. They want a fair shot. They want decent schools. They want safe streets. They can walk away from the party that's taken them for granted and abuse their trust and support for an agenda that actually will respect their freedom to make their own choices and to believe whatever they want, safe streets. Burnell Trammell wasn't killed by a corrupt police officer. He was cut down in the middle of the day after holding a Trump 2020 sign. That was his crime. And that's the angle.